Uh, who start, who, who's been in their business for more than 10 years? Who's been in it for more than five? Who just started their business? Man, if I knew half of what I knew now, it'd be a different game. Uh, and, and, and so coming to the conference three years ago is something that really changed my life. Eight million. Last year, it went exponential from eight to eighteen million dollars. So, if you could put your hands together and a round of applause for this. <laughs> Can you hear me? This slide right here was me three years ago. This is my wife. Um, how many of your bright spouse here with you? Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife's my backbone. So. Uh, we've been together since we were 15 years old, which seems a little bit crazy now thinking about it. Uh, she's Every decision I make, she's there. She kind of lives in the, in the background, uh, but I do talk to her a lot. She, she makes the decisions uh, for me, and I just kind of get to be the face sometimes. Uh, and that's tough. Um, so 15 years of marriage and four kids. Who am I? So I was born in Oklahoma, uh, born, born and raised. I moved to New Hampshire about uh, when I turned 14 is when I met my wife. Uh, I was in the football and skateboard. Okay, those are I'm, I'm an all-in type guy. Who's an all-in type guy? Yeah. Plan A, no option B. I wasn't doing anything else. I, I, I swore to myself almost every day I got on the field that I was going to be a professional football player, uh, and, and, and it didn't change until I moved to New Hampshire. Where I picked up skateboarding, and uh, kind of glad I did because who kind of who stands on on a stair, stair set and throws himself down repeatedly? All right, seems kind of crazy. Uh, change a little bit more, and then change a little bit more, change a little more. Finally, you get it right. I uh, come from a military family, uh, so today being Memorial Day definitely means a lot to me. I appreciate you guys spending your time here as well. I uh, served about five years. Again, plan A. I thought I was going to be a Marine until the day I died. Uh, some things happened once on a few deployments. My wife hated every moment of it, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I got out uh, after five years. So had to go to plan B. Never planned on being a roofer. I didn't know any of this existed until about three years ago. I believe that the harder I worked, the more money I was going to make. Who believes the harder you work, the more money you're going to make? Yeah. Right? Don't get me wrong, you need hard work. But it isn't just about laying shingles and slinging, uh, slinging the shingles. It's just not about that. And it took me a long time to get there. So I actually started selling this in October of 2012. So this October will be 10 years. Now, I'm from New Hampshire. Anybody from the Northeast? Anybody from where they, where they get snow? Starting a roofing company in October was probably not the smartest idea. Okay? It probably wasn't the smartest idea. However, I'm a commit now, figure it out type later type of guy. I was standing on the roof. I needed to get some of my licensing paperwork signed. Boss man came. He didn't really know me. He was talking to the foreman. I heard him telling jokes. I could hear those jokes. Those jokes where he's not going to make it. He's not going to get there. He's not going to, you know, all these things. And all I could say is, you know, watch me in my head. Uh, I haven't talked to him since the day I walked off. Two weeks later, I left. I took a couple guys with me. And I didn't have a plan, to be honest with you. Uh, that's why the ready fire ain't really resonated with me. Uh, who start, who, who's been in their business for more than 10 years? Who's been in it for more than five? Who just started their business? Man, if I knew half of what I knew now, it'd be a different game. Uh, and, and, and so coming to the conference three years ago is something that really changed my life. Who works more than 40 hours? More than 50? What about 70? Who works more than 70 hours? Who wears that as a badge of honor? Yeah, that was me. You couldn't outwork me. You couldn't outwork me. How many people know why you work that hard? You know why? Does everybody have a why? Everybody ever done a storyboard and they kind of put the things out there that show why you're doing it? I never did. I never did. I just knew that if I did it, then something great was going to happen. Uh, I did it for my family. That was probably one of the bigger things. Uh, but what part of family? Creating the family was the easy part, right? Um, creating a happy family is a little bit harder. Money? Um, never was really money driven. I was just more get in the moment, do as much as possible. Success, uh, standing here listening to some of these things talk. I mean, I, I guess I'm a humble guy, but it was I wasn't doing it for the success. Freedom, hell yeah, I was definitely doing it for the freedom. How many how many are working their ass off for freedom? That's right, 100. percent This is my family right here. My greatest achievement in life right now, and probably forever, is that me and my wife created a happy family. Those are my four kids right there. Um, it, we actually, me and my wife met at a skate park later in life, and uh, that's why we went back to the skate park. We met in 2004, and uh, we did some new pictures. Everything I do is for these guys. I was in a seminar after the story I'm about to tell you, and uh, and the guy told me, 
go home and ask your, your kids what you can do to be a better, better father. And it works everywhere. Ask your employees what you can do to be a better boss. Ask, your, ask a stranger what you can do to be a better stranger, right? It works with any person you're talking about. You want a better relationship? Go and ask them. I tell you what, it's awkward, especially with a wife. It's a super awkward conversation. But I asked them this question, and guess what they said? They said, jump on the trampoline. The whole time, I thought busting my ass and working hard and putting food on the table meant that I was a better father. But talking to these four kids, they thought that the more time I spent with them, that I was a better father on the trampoline. Right. Guess what I did a lot of that year? Yeah, that changed my life. So I started in October 2012. I uh, worked about seven years uh, into it until this day happened. That's my daughter right there. That's Belle. Uh, Princess Belle with a yellow dress is, is what you call her if you, if you see her in person because she won't accept anything else. Brian, uh, Brian. That, that's her. She, she actually got her hair done that day. That's why the picture there with her hands on her hips and she still acts that way three years later. Um, I, again, I, I was in the grind. I, nobody could outwork me. That day, you know, the salesman can't run an appointment. I'll run the appointment. Roof's not going to be done so we can start the next one. I'm coming over there. We're going to get this done. We're not stopping until they don't make sure we can start the one the next day. That's just my mindset. That's my attitude. That's just what I did every day. And I come home this day and uh, I go inside. And when I go inside, uh, I, I was late. I was running behind. So I grabbed the shirt, I washed my face, I was dirty because so I was you know, cleaning the ground. And, and I grabbed the shirt, I leave, back up, text the homeowner, get the address, I start driving. I heard a sound that I hear every once in a while, and it still makes me cringe, and it was like, oh. didn't think nothing of it. But I get halfway down my driveway, I look in my rearview mirror, and I see my daughter sitting there. I see my daughter sitting there, and, and I stop, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know, but I'm, I'm kind of going back, I was in a hurry, and I was angry, but, but mainly because she was on the ground sitting, and I didn't see my wife, and then I get a little bit closer, and I got this look. She never gave me this look before. And this look was, not, it wasn't hate, my, my daughter can hate anything. It wasn't hate, it was, it was um, dissatisfied. Or, uh, she was, she was hurt. I had just ran my daughter over, and I didn't even know it. And then I picked her up, and then she starts screaming. My wife comes out, she's yelling, and she's screaming. And, and, you know, what happened? What happened? I said, get the kids, get the boys, let's go. I put her in the car, and at this point, the, the screams are just so painful, right? I put her in the car, and I, my kids come flying out fast. I said, we got three, my wife said, we got three kids ready. Put them in the car, she jumps in, uh, and I say, I'm going to meet you at the hospital. I say, I'm going to meet you at the hospital, because I was still going to run that appointment. Just ran my daughter over, and I like to think about us making it to that homeowner's house. <laughs> You know, so and I've always thought about being a happy family, and then that was a very hard moment. The Mount, I've also never got that look from my wife. Again, it wasn't hate. My wife stands behind me almost everything I do, except for that moment. And that moment, the disgust that came back to me quickly snapped me back to reality. I jumped in the car and I drove to the hospital. This is the left picture is her uh, that morning. The right picture is her the next day. I uh, broke both of her legs and in one of her ankles, and it took about two months. It took about two months for her to get back, and she's back to home 100%. Uh, but in that moment of recovery, uh, I sat there, and I'm watching her, because I didn't know. I thought he was in the hospital now, so I knew she wasn't going to die. But I was, I was making promises to myself. How many people make promises to themselves when they're in a tough decision? If I just get out of this one moment, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, right? That's what I was doing. I was sitting there over and over making promises to myself. And uh, one of the biggest problems I said is I'll never leave my house again without saying goodbye to my, to my kids. Right? I can't go back, I can't make different changes, but I'll never walk out the door without saying goodbye to my kids again. I'll own my business, and I'll use all my abilities to create a successful company, because the successful company that everybody on the outside looking in thought I had was not real. I was stagnant, I was slaving away, we were, we were $2 million in sales, but that's what the outside showed. Right? I was overworked, I wasn't making the money that I, I should have been making, and I didn't really know where to go from there, I was trapped. And I didn't know how to get, so I made promises that I'm going to make myself better to get untracked. I'll ask for help. How many people like asking for help? Not this guy. I do now. I ask everybody. I ask for directions as fast as I can sometimes now. I didn't want to ask for help because asking for help to me meant that I didn't know. And if I didn't know, in my mind, being a Marine and all, I thought that was failure. Learning for others would become a way of life, and I will succeed at a high level. I wanted to learn from others. I knew, I heard a saying once, and it really kind of changed my perspective on this, and it was, um, a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a genius learns from other people's mistakes. And if you look at the graph from our business, you can see it, I was making all these mistakes. I was not a business owner. I went into roofing because somebody told me I couldn't do it. Everything I learned about being a business owner was getting kicked in the face. 
right? For the first seven years, everything I learned was on the way. And so I decided I'm gonna start learning from others. My, my mind will be on my family first, and everything else comes after. The family has to come first. Not just the facade either, saying I'm here for the family, because a lot of times I'd come home and I'd be in the family, but I wasn't there. My mind was somewhere else. My mind was on my business, and, and I needed help, but I didn't want to ask anybody for help. Fast forward seven years. Uh, at this point, I started reading books, started going to seminars. Uh, three years ago, I, I met Lee. I came to the Blue Collar Re American Dream Conference. I decided to take a lead and start asking for help. And, and I was willing to put my money where my mouth is. I've spent more money in coaching in the last three years than I ever thought would be reasonable. Uh, and, and, and I did it because after I got the first taste of, of reading books, I'm like, dang, that makes sense, that makes sense. And I started doing all these things. And, and then you just, if you look at the graph, man, it just started going up. I mean, from two million to eight million to 18 million, and we've already done nine already with three months of winter, and this is gonna be a crazy year. And it's all because I was willing to break down and learn from others. Who, who likes learning from others? Who, who wants to make your business go exponentially grow, right? What about your life? I mean, this isn't just your business, I mean, your life will exponentially grow. Everything's like a domino effect once you start making a commitment. Actionable items, so I wanted, I didn't want to just talk about the whole time, I want to talk about little things that I took away uh, from it, and, and leads is, is one of them, but I initially came here I wanted to, to, to learn about leads. I wanted, I needed more leads because I had a couple sales reps and that's all I really took away uh, from some of the marketing that I seen was if I come here I'll get more leads. Uh, reality is I started, I started learning even more than that, I started learning recruiting, I started learning how to be a better uh, businessman, I started to learn more on the marketing side, I started building a team of unbelievable people, a lot of them smarter than me. Right? So tap them, build them, track them, new ideas constantly. Uh, and that comes from a lot of the coaching calls. Those really changed my life. Being around other people. Being around other business owners, right? Three years ago, I didn't know this existed. Right? I thought the harder I worked, the more money I could make. So I would get on the roof and try to stretch my hours as long as I could. Recruit, get people on your team as fast as possible. Uh, good people. How many people got good people on their team? How many people got those people from actively looking for them or did they just come into their life? Yeah, actively looking for those people. A lot of the people on my team now, when I joined three years ago, not one, not one of those people are on my team now. Not one of them. It was either grow or go. And a lot of, and unfortunately, a lot of those had to go because I created this environment of, of essentially dependability. And a lot of them didn't want to put the work in once they once got there. So the people on my team now, none of them are here three years ago. A coach, and this doesn't just mean get coached uh, or, or coach your team, right? This also means getting coached. Uh, I, I, I was really strongly against it. I didn't think that I needed help. Uh, being led, and, and not just by Lee, not just by any other, uh, other outside coaches, but by your team members. Right? We're now actually running meetings, effective meetings, to where my team can coach me on, on the, the decisions that we're making. It's huge. It's transformational. Um, this is my first video here, guys. I didn't, I didn't get the video in, but look at this. I'm, I'm sitting here making a video, and, and the guy, I messed this job up, too. I ordered the windows wrong, it was taking longer. When you get somebody on video, they, they were almost never, I've never had it happen, they almost never say anything bad about you. This is my first video, my first testimonial video, I did it for them, and, and, then, and then it just started spawning from there. The next week I made 12 videos, and I just started making them. I wasn't good at it. I didn't really, I didn't really get all the way into the program, I started watching more, and I started watching more, and then I started doing it. How many people do videos now? Yeah. Well, it's not just about doing the videos, it's also the framework of the videos that's super important. It took me a long time to get there. This is my first live hire event. Three people showed up. How many people did a live hire event? No? It was scary. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. I started throwing everything out. I called the radio station. I called all my vendors. I had all my team there. Three people showed up. Three people showed up and I felt a little bit like a failure. So guess what I did? I didn't call any of them. I didn't call not one of them. Three weeks later, or three months later, the guy in the middle, Sean, joined my team because he was going to these recruiting events to help me build my team. And uh, he said, hey, where's that one kid? And it happened to be the Amazon driver. He came on, we called him on Friday. He started training on Monday, right? If I had just called him three months ago, I could have been a little bit further along. That kid made a quarter million dollars that year. It's crazy. How bad do you want to achieve your dreams? I can guarantee you this, and uh, Jocko said it best, and, and Dan Rooney, no, no, nobody's gonna change you but you. Nobody's gonna pull you out of the water. I had a team of yes people, right? They just, no matter what I said to them, they agreed with me. Nobody wanted to help level it up. I was depending on them, I would give them tasks, and I just trusted that it would go there. But nobody's going to get there except for you. You have to make the decision to succeed. Invest in your team and, and, and your, uh, for knowledge and tools. 
Give them the experiences. I guarantee you that once you let them run free, like Jocko was saying, the decentralized command, and you listen to them and you build them up, that they're going to help you succeed at a high level. And that's what I did. And I'm going to tell you what, that was not easy. That was hard. Because I thought I could do it better. I thought I could do it faster. Now we have over 60 people on the team. That's insane. A higher part, coach is hard. We talked about that because it, it, you have to admit that you don't know. Coaching a team, not Boston. I mean, I'm, I try not to, but sometimes you just get elevated. I mean, how many people yell, yell at their team? How many people feel like a strong leader because they can talk louder than the other people? It's just not true. It's just not true. It's really tough to get there. It's really tough to do that. So uh, our first core value at Southern is personal growth. I want every person on my team, and I genuinely care about building them up, not just with their, with their, um, not just with their, um, you know, business and sales and things like that, but actually growing. Growth is a choice, guys. Growth is a choice. You got to make the choice to grow. Um, sitting in that room right there, that was a, that was a Christmas party, and it's 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 life changing. There's a lot of smiling faces in there. Closing tips: uh, dream big. Right, my, my dream at the time was real small. I didn't understand that any of this was possible. Dream big, come up with ideas, and implement them. Let everybody else's dream fit inside your dream. Action, disruption always falls in tension. I mean, who, who would have thought that if you had a plan, you'd, you'd have better success, right? Right, I didn't know that, I didn't really think that. Myron Golden and, and they talked about this a lot. And be aware, proximity to power is the fastest way to create your own power. Once I came in this room and I started talking to other people and I started learning their mistakes, it was really life-changing. It was really life-changing. Listen, guys, I appreciate you guys listening to my story. I hope you don't make some of the same mistakes I made in the first seven years of my business. And if you enjoy the program, I look forward to working with each and every one of you.